Hello, I'm Michael, Michael Willems, and my camera and I are here to help you understand Lightroom a little bit better today. We're going to do a little bit of work on Lightroom aimed, as usual, at making things easier for you. So today we're going to talk about two simple things, two simple things that are very important in Lightroom. One is file renaming. When I look at my desktop, look at my desktop here, I have a random picture sitting here, for example, and as you see, it's not called its original file name, which would have been mvwx 5880cr 2 or whatever I shoot, but it's called something preceded by the date. And then perhaps something else afterward as well. How do I achieve that? Well, first of all, why would I want to achieve that? Very simple. Any picture that I find anywhere on my desktop, I can find quickly in Lightroom. I know that I shot this picture on 2014-0207, meaning February 7th. So if I go back into Lightroom, all I need to do is scroll to my file organization, which starts with photos, and within that 2014, and within that, here we go, 2007, 85 millimeters, here we go. And sure enough, there's the picture. All right, so how did I give it this name, this 2014-0207 dash something? Very simple. When I import, and you only have to do this once, there's a section called file renaming and as you can see I very simply called it date dash file name of course I can edit I can call pictures anything I like the file name template editor gives me that option I can say for instance date and file name and it gives you an option or an example so things might be called 2014-0805 dash image 01.raw but I could call it something else as well I could say well I also want I don't know the uh, uh, I know the ISO speed rating in there, you know, I don't know why I'd want that, but fair enough, um, you know, then it would be called uh, something including the ISO speed rating and another dash, let's put that dash there as well, and in this case it doesn't seem to, it doesn't uh, seem to want to show me that as a, um, as a preview, but it will be in the actual um, file name. I can also add other fields, but what I find is very simple. Keep it simple. What you do is um, date, starting with the year and then the month and the day, and then a dash and the file name. So that means every time a file is imported, it automatically gets renamed to the date, dash, and the file name, as you see here. Right. And so then when you export, it'll also have that. And then you can add more things to the file name upon export to indicate what kind of export it is, perhaps. So this renaming is basically something you should always do. There's no reason to have a file anywhere called MVWX5880 without the date. I know you can still find the date by right-clicking and looking at info and so on. But A, you can't sort by date then. And B, it takes too long. So that was tip number one. Make sure you rename your files upon import to at least add the date. And again, we start with the year, then the month and the day to facilitate sorting. Tip number two today is a very different tip. is a little bit more detail about skin fixes, what we were talking about earlier. Let's take uh, someone I took a picture of yesterday. Let's have a look at this. And let's see what we're going to do with the um, skin. If, for example, I wanted to fix little blemishes, right? As you know from a post uh, or a couple of posts in the recent past, I would go to the spot removal tool. I'd set it to healing. I would move the mouse button or key or, or wheel to uh, give it the right size. So, for instance, this little blemish here, I would want to cover it and then some. And I would click. Now, when I do that, as you can see, it chooses from somewhere that looks the same. And it usually gets that right. Uh, but not always, of course. So let's say that it decided to sample from here when I do that, right? And as you can see, that would look funny, wouldn't it? So what I can then do is manually search for something that looks the same. See, if I, if I did it from here, I'd get a little bit of eyebrow mixed in, which I wouldn't want. If I did it from here, I'd get that glare mixed in. So I'm going to look for something that looks exactly the same. And it's very simple. You just look away a little bit and make it look the same, and you're done. Let me show you another one here. Let's say that this little scar here I wanted to remove. Well, if I did this, as you can see, it's not quite the same, right? What you see here is it's a little bit duller here. So 
what I would want to do is move this until I find an area that has exactly the same texture and that area would be here. And now, as you see, it's indistinguishable from the real thing. Except I've also copied this little blemish back to here. Right? So I'm going to remove it, one of them at least, maybe like this. So what you need to do is get a feel for A, when Lightroom will guess right and when it will guess wrong, and B, what to do when it doesn't get right. You know, how quickly can you um, uh, search for another area? By the way, if you can't find the uh, sample area because it's outside your screen, if you hit the slash key on your keyboard, that's the forward slash, it'll be sampled from another area. And that is an alternative to you doing it. You can just hit the slash key in a, a number of times until it samples from some way you like. But I usually find doing it myself is much, much easier. Uh, another thing you can do, of course, is um, use a partial um, opacity, right? If I do this with 100% opacity, it covers. As I drag that opacity down, it covers a little bit less. Here, let me show you on a different area. Let's say that, uh, let's say that I wanted to remove this glare a little bit, right? Well, that's a huge area here, um, but it's probably small enough to sample from here, but that looks unnatural. First, I don't want to remove the entire uh, glare. Secondly, it doesn't look natural. What I would want to do in this case is drag the opacity to about somewhere between 30 and 50 percent. Here, this will do. That's about 60 percent. And now I've lessened, as you can see, that uh, glare without taking it away completely. If we click on the YY, you'll see before and after, and you'll see that it's less but not quite uh, um, not quite gone entirely. In fact, I still think looking at it now, it's a bit much. I'm going to make it less. 50% is usually my maximum, and in this case, same thing. That looks natural. Do you notice the colors are different before and after? Because I changed the white balance. Uh, another thing I'll often do is uh, look for a similar area. For example, if I have this here in the eye, if I wanted to remove that, I would um, click but as I'm clicking, I hold down my command, or if I'm a Windows, my control key. And as I'm holding that down, I can now sample from a certain area. I can find the area to sample from. So if I sample from here, for instance, that will give me a natural um, a partial fix there, if you will. Right? Can you see? So that's how you do that. So you don't need to let Lightroom do it if you already know where you're going to be sampling from. If I just clicked, Lightroom would pick and I'd have to correct it. But if I hold down my command key and then click, I can actually choose where to sample from. Here we go. And done. Uh, finally, it is also important that you know when uh, it will work and what you can do to make it work more reliably. If, for instance, I wanted to fix something here on this cheek, you'll find that Lightroom is very good at finding a similar area to sample from. If I do this, almost certainly it'll sample from right above or right below. And that's exactly what's needed, as you can see in this case. Now, there was nothing to fix, but if there had been, it would have been done. So learn these tools. Spend a few minutes. Spend, I don't know, a few dozen minutes if you must. Spend hours if you have to. Finding out how these tools work, because they're really very sophisticated and you can do almost everything that you can do in much uh, slower tools, um, things like Photoshop. Now, of course, in Photoshop you can do more, but my message here is that you can do 90% of what you can do in Photoshop um, with a little bit of creativity in Lightroom, and more that for most photographers you can do 99.9% .9 of what you need to do as a photographer in Lightroom. But all this depends on you knowing the tools and how they react and when they'll work and when they don't work. So spend a little bit of time playing with these tools. What is the penalty for playing with these tools? Zero. Uh, can you destroy a picture by doing this? No, because as you remember, Lightroom does non-destructive editing. Everything I do is just an entry in a database. My original file, whether it's a RAW or a JPEG or whatever it may be, is never touched. It is always there. And that means I can always go back to my original file. If I look here on the left at history, for example, this is the entire history of what I did with this file. So I imported, and now on the right, it's gone back to what it looked like when I imported. And I added spot removal, and did the color, and as I move up here, you'll see the little image um, top left change with what I'm doing. Of course, it's hard to see because there's small changes. And you'll see the image on the right change as well. So I can always go back. I can always say, well, I want to go back to exactly what it was like when I imported. 
And now if I make any other change, it'll throw away all those other changes I just made. If I didn't want to do that, of course, I do Command Z, or if I'm a Windows, Control Z to undo that. That's another thing you need to know. You can always use Control Z or Command Z to undo what you just did. Don't be afraid to try something. If it didn't work, undo it. All right, that's today's lesson. Have fun, enjoy Lightroom, and if you haven't yet converted from Aperture to Lightroom, give me a call, send me an email. Check me out on www.speedlighter.ca or by the services and the ebooks and so on uh, on http colon slash slash learning dot photography. This is Michael Williams. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.